So, uh, well, first of all, thanks, uh, Ima, for uh, having me. Um, just wait quickly for the slides. Um, there we go. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to try to, I mean, I know we just had lunch. Everybody's having his little after dinner dip. Um, so I'll try to keep it quite light and maybe a bit more inspirational uh, rather than, you know, deep down and techy. Even though I must say the page speed insights or the page insights, I really like it. I really liked uh, the IEMA redirect path. I'm definitely going to use that one um, within my company, TNT. So, uh, corporate SEO, but then with a twist, with a startup mentality. Uh, I'm going to do, before I start, a little exercise with all of you. So, um, if you could all just raise up your hands in the air. Everyone, thank you. <laughs> um, and I'd like to you to drop your hands um, if you don't apply to uh, the question or the, the, the statement I'm making. So drop your hands if you're not an online marketer in your current company. Okay. Uh, drop your hands if you are not doing SEO. Almost everyone doing SEO, that's great. That's really great. I love this. Um, Anyone that's working in a company with more than 50 employees? Okay, a couple left. More than 100? 200? A uh, little doubt there. Uh, how about 1,000? A a company more than 1,000 employees. We have three hands. Okay, seven, eight. Good, more than 10,000? Ooh. Okay, well, it's good. Well, it, it could be that at one a point in time, uh, you'll be working for a company that has, say, 50,000 employees, uh, be it Adidas, our previous employer, or uh, TNT, uh, which I'll dig into in uh, a little bit later. But that gives about a whole different dynamic when it comes to uh, how you treat SEO within your company. I mean, you're not responsible for everything. You're just responsible for this SEO part, right? So how can you try and do that? in the best way possible. Um, little disclaimer as well before I start. Uh, I'm definitely not an SEO guru. Let's just be straight about that. I'm not a startup expert either, even though I'm going to try and share some experiences that I had. Um, I have not written a book, although I've been thinking about it a lot, because all the stuff that I've been talking and dreaming about, you could probably fill a, an encyclopedia, um, but not writing it yet. And I'm not a good corporate expert either. So you're thinking, what can this guy you know, provide in terms of value to us? Um, what I can claim is that I'm a man, last time I checked. Um, <laughs> I have been doing SEO for over 11 years now. Uh, and that, funnily enough, started during my student time, where imagine this you know, four by four meters. I think we use meters in the UK, right? Four by four meter room with on the one end a door, on the other end a window. Uh, I started a web shop from my student room, where instead of having wallpaper on one wall, I had my whole wall with like uh, a storage of shoes in that case. So the whole wall was uh, all boxes with shoes that I was selling online. That kind of started the whole SEO passion, if you wish. Uh, and I've been doing corporate SEO for a little over four years now. Uh, and again, um, what I'd like to really do is share my experiences and see if you eventually can apply them to your current role or maybe to your future role. Who knows, right? There you go. So a little bit more about my background during my student time. And this will also give you kind of an idea of my, my passion for startups. Um, I studied industrial design engineering in the Netherlands. Of course, you didn't hear it. I'm Dutch. Um, but I, I did that in uh, Delft. And the, the nice thing about industrial design uh, especially there, is that you look at a product from beginning to end, from the start, which is what we call the, the fuzzy front end, for those that, that know about it, this is where you have basically a blank sheet, no ideas, no nothing, and everything just you know, opens up. You're trying to solve a problem, that's where you start. Going on to you know, developing a product, testing it, prototyping it, uh, eventually putting it out in a market, so there's a part marketing there as well seeing what users actually think of the product, and then you get the muddy back end, which is like, uh, you know, cradle to cradle, back, back to the, uh, the recycling, et cetera, et cetera. 
But the nice thing about it is the fuzzy front end, the part where everything is possible. And in a way, in corporates, that's the same thing, especially if you have a corporate that is just starting e-commerce. You know, SEO is one of the things they, that they probably haven't thought about. Uh, after my studies, I went to a country where this little fellow is the, uh, one of the symbols of the country. Anyone guess where this is? Where? No, almost. Other guesses? I know some of you people know. Costa Rica? Yeah, does this ring a bell? I spent two years there, um, created my own company there, and um, the only thing I have to say that a holiday destination combined with you know, pure business, tricky. Uh, lots of learnings, though, lots of learnings. Uh, after that, life got serious. I joined this group, uh, Adias Group, which, interestingly enough, uh, and this will you know, appeal to a lot of people that are interested in, in startups and, and kind of the mentality that comes along with a sports brand, is that they started with impossible is nothing. Now, how great is that? You can basically come in and you can do everything, because. Nothing's impossible. Second one, uh, it's like a slogan or the, the brand statement that they use, is, uh, Adidas is all in. So whatever you do, go all the way. Right now, they recently uh, uh, added a new one, which is creating the new. Again, it comes from this like, feeling that you need to constantly reinvent yourself, right? We'll get to the SEO part, don't worry. Um, and recently, I made the change to uh, this company, uh, TNT uh, in the Netherlands as well, which um, is actually right now only starting their efforts in e-commerce. Right, so this is mostly B2B. I mean, apart from some countries like the UK, we also do B2C, um, and we really start now only um, understanding the value of getting traffic. You know, be it uh, individuals or uh, or people working on the website and getting them to convert on a digital platform, on the website, or an app, or whatever. Um, funny thing about TNT is that they're being taken over by this guy, FedEx. And for those actually who are uh, paying attention to the slides, there's this, um, a link with one of the movies that I really like. I'll ask you about it later, and maybe I'll have something for you. Um, funny thing, again, about these corporates, is that they started out somewhere, right? The startups of yesterday are the new corporates of today. This is a slide that I found really interesting. I found somewhere on the web where basically it shows that um, you know, startups like Uber, Airbnb, which right now are, used to be the new kids, but now are really the big corporates. They, they, they started somewhere. But notice a trend. It says the world's largest toxic taxi company owns no taxis. They're pretty successful, I would say. Uh, same with Airbnb. The largest accommodation provider owns no real estate. Think about that for a moment. What does that mean for your business? And I tried to put down a couple at the bottom. You can read them if you want later on. At the bottom, how would that apply to Adidas? The largest sport retailer owns no sports shoes, no production facilities, maybe just sports data or something like that. And for a courier, largest courier company doesn't employ any couriers or doesn't have its own infrastructure. These are interesting challenges that um, big corporates are being faced with right now. And why they're being uh, attacked, in a way, from left and right is because of these companies, they kind of do have a startup mentality. So that at some point, they're going to catch up with you, and they're going to tear you apart. And then you, uh, Big companies actually um, are removed from the competitive landscape because of this. Oh, there. Um, interesting research that was done on my future employee, um, yeah, employer, sorry, um, which is FedEx. And this, we're looking at the top navigation of the website of FedEx, right? All these small companies are targeting a very small subset of services or um, offerings that a company like FedEx provides us. Now, this is a challenge. How do you deal with that? Obviously, these small companies, they can't just go, you know, jump in and, and take, it the whole, uh, take the whole company on and, and fight it out and, and try to win. 
But what they do to hack growth is they take a very small piece, be laser focused on what they do, and try to do it better. And that's from a startup perspective, right? They have an outside in view. But if you look at it from a corporate, if you want to achieve any change, you have to look at it from the inside out, right? You have to start digging around within the company, start kicking shins, start you know, asking questions, maybe asking questions that nobody else has asked. That's the big corporate kind of position or starting position. Now think a little bit more with me, because um, if you think about it, we are all startups, right? We, we all started somewhere. Think back to the time that you had the first day on your first job. How's that feel? Was it exciting? A little bit nervous, nerve-wracking maybe? I bet you had to shake a lot of hands and you know, pretend to remember a lot of names that you didn't remember after all. A week later that came obviously with time. But we're all starting up somewhere. And in a lot of ways, SEO as an industry is also constantly in this startup mode, if you wish. Because there's a lot of ambiguity. I mean, SEOs have to think about a lot of different aspects of, uh, of marketing, but they deal with, you know, with webmasters, with the IT team within your company, with uh, UX design, CX, CRO, analytics, um, what else do we have? Content teams, translation teams, or agencies, other types of agencies. Um, at some point, maybe the CRM team as well. This guy's uh, sending out the emails. And i probably give an example of an uh, interaction that we also have with the legal team. SEOs do all that. So the, there's a high ambiguity in, in the kind of work that we do. It's not really straightforward. There's also high complexity. Uh, a couple years back, I think this is kind of ancient news, but they said, oh, there are about 400 plus ranking signals. Well, that's interesting. If you could tinker just a couple of those and that would change the, the outcome. It's a high complexity. It's a you know, pretty complex playing field. Even more so recently, uh, since, say, the, the launch of Hummingbird, um, some of you may know that, um, and the whole implementation of machine learning at the algorithm part. Remember that there was a question uh, the, other, the other day to, to someone within Google saying, you know, does anyone know actually the algorithm? Not at all. Maybe some people in Google know parts of the algorithm. Nobody really knows. It's highly complex. And on top of that, the machine learning part, and you'll be in a constant state of change. So if you want to take up on startup mentality, expect change and also drive change because you're, you're going to be in it. You're going to be submerged in it. So with all that ambiguity, complexity, and all the change, where do you start? Right? It's a big mess, and we SEOs have to figure out what to do, where to begin. Uh, and within a big corporate, you know, 50,000 people, it's not like you can just say, hey, uh, can we uh, switch uh, domain names? Can we go from this to this? No, it takes a lot of people and a lot of, you know, a lot of effort to do that. So, where to start? Um, number one would be to be visible, right? And there's different ways in which you can be visible. There's obviously the, uh, the human way. And I brought a little thing, so I'll add to my visibility. It's, it's stupid stuff, but if you want to be recognized in the company, step one is being visible. So, here we go. <laughs> More visible now. Um, it's, it's not just that, it's also the visibility that you get on, for example, Google itself. What was the, uh, the quote again? Uh, the best place to hide a dead body is the second page of Google. It's true. It's true. But think about what the part that is visible then, the first page, right? So on the first page, what can you change to increase visibility? If you are there on a, uh, you know, in any, any query, any result, uh, and this works specifically well for uh, branded terms. So if you type in like Adidas or TNT, typically what should show up is the homepage. You'd be surprised how often it doesn't sometimes. Um, 
But there are basically three, maybe four things there that you can influence. One is the title, the other is the URL, third one is the description, and the fourth one maybe, I mean, it's, it's not that obvious, but you could implement rich snippets if you, you know, if you get lucky, if you're on the right query, right position, etc. Those are things that you can influence and you can create some visibility for yourself uh, for what you do for SEO within a company. We did a, a project with TNT. First thing uh, that we, since we came in, we noticed that um, we had, well, we're operating in like 200 countries. We have like 60 different home pages targeting you know, specific countries. And most of them would say home in the title or initio or uh, Stadtseite for those Germans around here, um, which is, you know, it's just pathetic. But you can create a lot of visibility by just saying, oh, you know what? We're going to take that as a project. We're going to change all the homepage metadata to make it relevant. So let's just add the brand in there. Makes sense, right? Might actually add to the rankings as well. Um, we're going to add the locale or the country, right? Making sure that for that country, people know, oh, TNT, uh, you know, UK is different than TNT US, because even that gets confused sometimes. Um, we do that, we involve the content team, we involve the translators, um, we involve the local markets, making sure that they are signing off on it, and all of a sudden, boom, you have visibility to 70 people, depending on how many markets you're, uh, you're operating in. It's stupid, simple things, but you can really increase your visibility if you do that. After that, you have to deliver, obviously. Oh, second of all, be crawlable and be crawling. Um, again, you can interpret this from a you know, literal point of view, which I won't uh, suggest. Uh, you can interpret it from a Google point of view, right? Your website needs to be crawlable before it can get indexed. Same as from a, from a, you know, a position within a company. Be accessible, be approachable. It's nice that you're visible, right? It's nice that you're the guy with the Christmas mug that everybody knows you. But if you're just an ass to talk to, nobody's going to listen to you. So be friendly, be nice, and also be able to provide value to people coming to you with questions. Um, even, even if it might be completely out of your scope. Right? It's better to just be able to help them out or even reach out and say, you know what, I'm going to help you out on this. Um, after all, if you can create value for them, at some point, they'll return the favor. And with SEO, it works a lot like that. And be crawling yourself. So go out there within your organization and talk to people. Ask them questions. Make sure that they know who you are and they know that you can be valuable to them. Oh. Be memorable. I'm going to pause for a second here. When was the last time you actually helped someone within your company? Well, theoretically, on a daily basis, right? Who was the last time that somebody came back to you and said, oh, wow, the thing you did with the website and those redirects and you know, those metadata, and we doubled our traffic. That's amazing. The good thing is, if you do something that helps them and you know it's going to help you as well, it kind of plays into that whole ambiguity thing, where you have to talk to a lot of different departments. All of them, in the end, will improve your SEO visibility, be that traffic or be that revenue. So make sure people know who you are and come back to you for more. Be flexible. Um, I know, especially in corporates, I mean, and a good example of this is a uh, is a TripAdvisor, where uh, their SEO, their head of SEO, is actually directly reporting to the CEO, right? So it might be that uh, one time you're you're creating a business case to prove to the to the to the CEO that you need to you know buy back this domain name because there's X amount of value of that, and then redirect all that traffic to your website. Uh, but the next time you're changing metadata for the Cambodian website, so you have to be flexible and you have to be able to switch. Rapidly. Same with startups, right? I mean, the person presenting himself as the CEO of his own startup, it's a one-man show. He's going to do the sales. He's going to do the administration. He's going to do the product development. He's going to have the idea. I mean, I'm 
just to be clear, I'm assuming that if you're gonna do SEO in a corporate world, SEO is your idea, that's your product, right? That's what you're selling. So be flexible, be flexible to do that thing, talk to that CEO, but also do the dirty work. Um, again, tapping into that ambiguity. I really see that SEO can be bringing a lot of teams together because of the fact that so many aspects of your company will impact SEO. Basically, you know, the content team, uh, you, need, you need them to create content. But you also need the email marketing team to spread the message. You need the PR team to spread the message even more. I'm gonna take this thing off now. It's a bit annoying. So as an SEO, you have, uh, let's say, a bigger responsibility, but also a bigger range of influence within the company. And it kind of functions as a glue. Oh, there you go. Last but not least, and this is something I've noticed actually in, in, in a lot of companies, make sure that you are that person that is able to talk with the chiefs, but at the same time be the workhorse and show that you can deliver value. It happens too often that, that, that you know, they, they keep on adding new managers and new managers and new managers. This is probably not a new story for anyone, but the more managers that think on a strategic level, the more plans are gonna come. You need the backup, you need the IT people, the developers to support that. You need the people that are gonna do the dirty work, be it the interns or trainees or whatever. But you need those people to compensate for that overwhelming amount of strategy that's suddenly bursting out and, and you know, being created within your, com within your company. Uh, and then lastly, a quick note for all you Gray hats and black hats, I'm not giving any names here. Um, and this is my thought, I mean, it's, it's not really about breaking the rules when you're trying to get something done within a corporate. Um, it's just about understanding that you're probably coming into a situation where other people have created processes, have created guidelines, have created rules, but they were kind of created in, a, in an ancient time. Things are moving so fast right now that we need to be able to be flexible, but if you want to get things done, really done, you need to be as persistent as you can be and keep on challenging the status quo. Keep kicking those shins within reason, obviously. So with that, I thank you. <laughs>